Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Gek alongside Don Bailey Jr. And, of course, University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. And this week, the Hurricanes kick off the 2019 football season against the Florida Gator. We'll have that for you in Orlando. And uh, Coach Diaz with us. Coach, great to see you. Great to be with you. And uh, head coach of the Miami Hurricanes, what's it been like for you getting ready for the Gator? Finally game week. Yeah. It's finally here, which has been great. Um, we had a really good training camp, and then we uh, turned our attention to Florida uh, probably over a week ago. So we really got two solid weeks. Uh, kind of did our, our bowl game model where you, you practice them for a week. You have the whole game plan in. We did a mock scrimmage at Hard Rock Stadium uh, the previous Friday night. You know, really got to see where we were at. And then you come back again, you really repeat the same structure. So you've, it's the second time around, you know, around the track. Everything's very familiar. So our guys can really feel comfortable with exactly how uh, we feel schematically is the best way to set ourselves up to beat these guys. Coach, you spent so much time in the off season. We talked about in the spring with strength and conditioning. Right. And you, you said this is, that was the important time from spring between the spring and now the fall. How did that translate once the camp started? You could see it. You could, you could tell our players, uh, their ability to, to work and go and, and push through training camp and not just survive it, but attack mm-hmm. it. And, um, and then we continued lifting even during training camp. And when I had a couple of the older guys come up to me and say, Coach, this is the best my body's felt at any time during a training camp. When we were going hard now, it's not like we weren't having a physical camp, but they really felt the difference in their bodies. Is it amazing to think that players now can gain weight and gain strength during training camp? That's a big swing from back in the day. It really is. Well. And they're with us all summer, so it's not like, you know, back they've been sitting on a, right. beside a pool all summer and, and then they have to come to play their way back into shape. They, they were in great shape when we reported, and, and, uh, and now you, you have to fine-tune it and get them ready to go play in the game. When you uh, took the job, the day you took the job, you knew exactly how many days it was to the Florida Gators. How significant is that for you, your first coaching uh, game against the Florida Gators? It's a great challenge for us. It's the perfect opener because yeah. we need to be on. We, we need to understand what it means to be Miami, which means we have to be comfortable playing on big stages. We have to be comfortable, comfortable playing against top ten opposition, and we always have to be comfortable playing against rival teams in our state. Um, and so, right in, the, I mean, it's like let's get right in the frying pan, right, for, right from the opener. But you know what? I think that's a good message for our program. It certainly created a sense of urgency throughout the entire off season, and uh, and we get to find out. You know now. You know, I think we've, we have really improved through spring and through training camp. But you reach a point, you know what, we got to go play a game. Let's go find out what we're all about. Let's go get in there and mix it up and see who, you know, who steps up, who gets a little bit, you know, bright-eyed and, and, and see what we're all, at, all about. Coach, so much time was spent focusing on the offense and the quarterback. Let's hit the defense for a second. Overall, you have brought in a new defensive coordinator, but basically they have the same vocabulary as you. They have the same vocabulary, but we always, you know, we always start at kindergarten again every year because we never assume, and you ne- can never assume that just because you did X, Y, and Z the year before, that you start off there the next year. Um, and it all starts again with the things that we establish here in 16, which is the way that we run the ball mm-hmm. and the resilient effort that we play with, and and then our toughness and tenacity, and and you know, and causing turnovers and those type of things, and that has to be rebuilt every year. We always say the castle gets built, you know, knocked down every year, and you got to rebuild it, and. Uh, we lost some really good players off last year's defense, but so we got some guys that just, you know, as we've done in the past, that it's now their turn, and that's why they came to Miami, and that's why they waited behind some really good players, and, and it's their time now to shine. We'll get to uh, the quarterback decision in a moment, but while we're on the defense, you're going against an offense, the Florida Gators, that finished strong a year ago. The quarterback, a six foot six gunslinger, Felipe Franks, what, what problems might they present to you? Well, with Franks in particular, he, he's got such a strong arm. I mean, I mean, the ball just explodes out of his hands, and so he can make all the throws to the wide side of the field, deep, you know, anywhere he wants to. And then he's got a lot of targets back. I think their top six receivers yeah. all returned off last year's team, so they've got a lot of experience. It's year two in their scheme, right? Um, it's year one in ours, you know, offensively, not defensively, of course. And then the quarterback's best friend, of course, always the running back, you know, because he can just turn and hand the ball off, and they've got – you know, three or four guys, they, they believe that they can roll in there that that will all run hard, you know, that will all run through tackles. Game one, you're always a little concerned about tackling because you have so many, only so many tackle opportunities during your training camp. So we've got to really wrap up. We've got to really run our feet on contact and bring these guys to the ground. You've been with Dan Mullen as you work with him as a defensive coordinator and a position coach as well. How much has his game changed from when you worked with him? I mean, the last time, of course, was 16, but before that as well. 
Yeah, I, I've been able to follow his evolution as a coach. We were, um, you know, we won nine games both times we were at Mississippi State, which is hard to do at Mississippi State. They've only done that, I think, six times ever in their history. Um, but Dan, you know, some things on the, on, the, on the service change, you know, he went to a higher tempo offense when I was there the second, second time around, but what has not changed is that he's a very intelligent football coach. Um, his offense is always very well schematically organized. Um, and they're going to ask some questions of you defensively to make sure that you can stop. And they're all the fundamental stuff. Number one, you got to be able to do a great job stopping the run and, and then the play-action passing game off of that and then a multitude of formations to try to cause you some issues. So, um, you, know, he, you know, he knows all about us. We know all about him. And it's going to come down to them guys on the field playing. Yeah, they came out with pretty good balance at the end of last year, like 215 passing, 215 running. It was right down the middle. Right. Yeah, and that's what, you know, and if they can do that, you know, I say if they can run the ball like that, then, you know, they can throw it whenever they want to. So, it, like this game, like most games, it's, it's, it's not changed no matter how the offense and college will have, have evolved. It's still very simple. The easiest thing to do is to run the football. Yeah. And if you make someone stop doing the easy things and make them execute you doing the hard things, that's a much lower percentage, and that's what you have to force people to do. Coach, their defensive coordinator is Todd Grantham. He's been in the NFL and been around college football, but he's a guy that they say is an odd front or a 3 4 front. Right. Kind of explain that because. Miami Hurricane defense is four down linemen a majority of the time, or at least it's thought of that. Yeah, Florida will do both. You'll see them in both arrangements on Saturday night. They will line up with, with three def- defensive linemen in um, and, and, and a four linebacker look. But really, there's one outside linebacker who on the next snap, he'll just be playing defensive line, and then they'll have four down. So they'll go back and forth, which as an offense, you have to make sure you have your rules of who to block because your rules change, whether they're in a three down front or a four down front. And But then very much like us, um, Todd's done, done a great job of, of they're going to play tight coverage. I think they were 16th in the nation last year in pass defense. Uh, they're going to get after the quarterback, and they want to cause turnovers. They, they caused a bunch of turnovers a year ago, so it's important for us to protect the ball. Ironically, Todd Grantham was the defensive coordinator at Louisville when Miami opened the season against Louisville with a new quarterback in Brad Kaya. You're going to start with a new quarterback in Jaron Williams. What did you see, uh, what did you and Coach Eno see in Jaron uh, that allowed him to win the job? You know, it was a it was a long battle, you know, to, to go and, and really evaluate. There were ups and downs for all the guys. Um, maybe at different times of the year, it might have been a different guy that would have won it. But we wanted to turn this into a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, the way we evaluated never changed. Avoid critical errors, uh, great decision making, and then great accuracy. And then the, the little extra thing on top would be, can you make the extra special play? So don't don't get us beat. Know where to go with the ball. Get it there accurately. And then can you make something maybe special happen? And um, over the course of the long haul, all three guys elevated their game that I would watch his practice. I, we can win with any of these three. I felt really good about our decision. But Jaron just nosed it at the end. And, and really, his instinct for the quarterback position and just understanding of where to go with the ball and, you know, something, you know, very natural to him, I think ultimately you know, gave him the, the, the job at the end. And how has he taken hold of it? Well, he's done well. But I think the whole team has done well because we've been needing this for a long time. You know, it's it's good to know who your guy is. And, you know, even last year where it was kind of back and forth, it's just hard for the whole team to really want to rally behind somebody. And we told the team when we made the announcement, look, it's not on Jaron to put a cape on. You know, our defensive tackle can help protect our quarterback by the way he stops the run. Right. You know, our, our tight end has to protect the quarterback by the way he sticks his route and doesn't round his route. You know, certainly our – our right guard has to protect the quarterback by the way he run blocks. So he can run the football. Our backs have to run hard. So everyone on the team is responsible to protect the quarterback. The quarterback, therefore, his only responsibility is just to protect the team. Don't do anything that just burns down the building. And if you just do that, we'll have a great relationship, and that will win a lot of games. You also talked a lot about, uh, especially leading into this, about how the quarterback at Miami has to understand what it means to be the quarterback at Miami. And I sense that he now is also – getting that picture that there's a, been a, a maturity to him and he's starting to understand that this is a big deal to be the quarterback in the University of Miami. Oh, yeah. Oh, he gets it. And, 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 and he'll get another lesson on Saturday <laughs> night, the first time he's got to walk off the field on third down, which is going to happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, hey, all of our guys are going to make mistakes. Their guys are going to make mistakes too, you know. So what I'm really looking for is a resiliency because one thing when you're the quarterback, the whole team is watching you. And they're watching your nonverbals. They're watching your body language. And, you know, when something doesn't happen the way you want it to, which invariably will happen, you know, how does it bother you? Do you make it look like it bothers you? Or are you able to let it go and move on to the next play? And that'll be a big touch for Jaron. Manny, when you think about it, though, every single player on the football team 
when they come into college as freshmen, they all get hit the first day and every day that right. they're on. The quarterback has been really exempt from contact if they start as a redshirt freshman or fifth year senior. How do you prepare a guy that hasn't been hit to get hit like he's going to get hit that's right. Saturday? That's a big deal. That's right. It's called get the ball out of your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you so, um, Quick. You're right. And most people don't hit their quarterbacks, you know, during practice. You know, yeah. just, it's hard to do that. And, and uh, Jaron actually earned a lot of respect um, in training camp. There was a turnover, and he passed about three players chasing down the defender who was running the ball back mm -hmm. for a touchdown and made a pretty good form tackle along the sideline and just just that want to of saying hey listen we got a bad down our offense we turn the ball over um but i'm going to protect again i'm going to protect the team i might let this guy score i'm going to give shaq corbin and mike Pickney a chance to come out and play defense and um i think when he when we show the team that play i think he earned some respect of his teammates watching him you know hit and tackle on that play i remember that tackle and because he went sliding right in front of me but that was and it, that wasn't an easy play no i know it was, <laughs> it was pretty impressive yeah, yeah it was very much uh We'll wrap up this segment going back to Florida for a moment because it is a big deal in this state and the, the series is, is going to continue. But how do you get that to the players? Because Miami and Florida don't play that often. Maybe they, you know, these kids, kids played against each other in high school and so forth. But as schools, this is a big deal. This is a guy Don Bailey played in this okay. rivalry. And uh, it means a lot. It does. Well, we'll, you know, we'll talk about the tradition. We'll talk about the history of the series. Um, but I think you made it. I, th I think you made mention it's really the guys on the team. And that's what makes this robbery, you know, it doesn't matter how often it occurs. I mean, there's, we got a bunch of guys that know a bunch of their guys and vice versa. And nobody wants to lose, you know, when you're fighting in the neighborhood block, everybody wants to win, you know, over the little neighborhood block park. So that's what this is. This is, this is a, you know, little local, you know, backyard ball type deal. All right. We are off and running. We'll continue. We'll have more of a breakdown of Miami and Florida with Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz right after this. Welcome to The Breakdown with Coach Manny Diaz. And as we're getting prepared for the Miami, Florida game, we're going to look at some plays that could happen against the Gator. Coach, let's start off with red wine against Florida State from last year. Yeah, when you talk about an opening game, there's really three things that are going to be important. Number one is obviously turnovers, right? Um, third down defense. And then you're always concerned about pre-snap communication, just making sure that in a crazy environment like we know it's going to be in Orlando, that everybody's able to communicate. So this is a a huge third down from a year ago. Obviously, we're losing by 20 points midway through the third. You know, time is against us. And there's a couple things here. Number one, we're going to hit all three. We're going to get third down defense. We're going to get a turnover. We're going to get, get pre, great pre-snap communication. So Florida State, they've, all, they've already started in a bunch formation right here. And we've got a disguise going because we've got one safety deep in the middle of the field. So the quarterback, he's seeing that when you see a safety deep in the middle of the field, generally speaking, the one-on-ones are to the outside of the ballpark, right? They run a guy in motion just to confirm that. And you can see Amari Carter right there showing that we've got, you know, may, he may have that guy man, these two guys might have that guy man, and then with a guy like Jaquan in the deep middle, which means the one-on-ones here are here on the outside. Okay, but then he takes a snap and Amari runs back and actually Amari plays half the field and then, and then Jaquan does the same thing over here. And so this is not a soft corner, that's a hard corner. And that's important because Florida State's running all guys just running to the chains, basically, and running comebacks. Four guys running comebacks to the chain. So our four underneath defenders are basically just catching those four routes. Meanwhile, okay, there's also been a little bit of this uh, cat and mouse game going here with the protection. Okay, because right now they have turned their protection to the boundary. We've got a couple extra defenders right there, and we're not coming from the boundary. Remember, Red Wine, let's go back to him. We thought he was covering a guy over here. Well, he's not. He's coming on the blitz. So the second that guy chases down, Romeo's going to come outside the back, and then you see red wine free. Now, what we say is when you're a free hitter on the quarterback, it's not about sacking. It's about creating a ball disruption play, right? Because this is like Christmas, so make it count for the team, which he does. And then, again, great effort right there by our guys to get on it in a critical situation in the game. Change the game. And now, Coach, we're going to go up to Blacksburg, Virginia Tech, second quarter. 14, uh, 14 minutes, 43 seconds left. Virginia Tech leads it this time, 7-3 to three over the Hurricanes. And... Shaq Quarterman comes up with a play. Right, so again, a couple of things. Uh, senior linebackers, right, the guys you expect to, to play well um, on the 24th. And, and so there's a couple little thin things here. Again, we are in a, uh, in a one high defense now. So, you know, everybody's sort of locked up in, in a man-to-man -man posture. The running back flies out there. Zach McLeod has the running back. We call this a free release, which means the running back has no blocking responsibilities. They're only going to block our four defense linemen 
with their five offensive linemen. And if we came on a blitz, either the, the quarterback would have to throw hot off the blitz or something would happen quick. So usually when you get a free release from a running back, the ball is going to be thrown quickly. All right, so, so Shaq Quarterman understands that, and he instantly goes right there. You can see the quarterback stripe of his helmet look towards the in-breaking route right there. Now, in-breaking routes are hard to cover because Trajan Bandy here, he's got to defend the outside part of the field. Remember, they have no help deep here to the outside. They do have help here in the middle of the yard. So this is a slant that is a common route that you would see. So all Shaq does is a great angle here from this vantage point. Once he sees the free release, he sees the quarterback, and once that stripe goes right there, watch, watch Shaq take off, bang, and there it is. And that's, you know, because it's hard for Trajan to be outside and inside the guy, but that's why you trust your help defense is about trust. Trajan's got the outside half of the, the, the defender. Shaq has him, and if the guy went deep, Jaquan would have him. That's just good leverage. In, in layman's terms, in reality, the stripe is what led him to the ball because that's what he's taught to read, correct? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And then now, boom, now we make, be able to make the play. Everybody got a big kick out of the, the Shaq move. Got to keep the ball <laughs> high and tight to our body. But, but again, great set up a score for our offense right there, which is what it's all about. All right, Coach, what's the problem? These linebackers don't get in the end zone. They get close, but they're not getting in. I've noticed, yeah, I've noticed. Well, maybe that's why they came back their senior year to try to find a way to score. Thank you for joining Don Bailey and Manny Diaz on The Breakdown.